Welcome back, everyone, to this week's episode of In Today's Timeline. Um, I hope you enjoyed our uh, DC Fandom special, and um, we did get some good um, feedback from uh, that special. They, people seem to people seem to like that one quite a lot. Yeah, they like the back and forth, so I think we're going to stick to that. So um, yeah, We'll stay with that the best we can. Don't know if that'll be with every single comic book, as we read quite many, and it's quite expensive, but... Uh... What's uh? I guess we get started this week. Yeah, let's start with um, DC versus vampires. This one's written by Matthew Rosenberg and art by Otto Schmidt. Uh, Otto Schmidt's art is very good. I really like his art. Yeah, it's very even from the cover itself. I mean, it's it's gorgeous. Great art. Um, great colors on it. A really nice book with, um, I think it had really good pacing on this. Um, it was a great introduction to this, to this problem, this new problem that the DC universe is now facing. Um, and that is some, everyone can be vampires. Some people might not be vampires. Uh, we know that Green Lantern is a vampire. Yeah, that was uh, a surprise right from the get go. Um, really cool, cool scene with green lantern um blending one of the wonder twins uh yes yes one of the wonder twins are are now down the drain yeah he's a milkshake and green lantern drinks him up so and then uh it's also hinted green arrow could be a vampire yeah i didn't catch it at the beginning when the vampire dude the main guy's running he says they could be anywhere and you kind of see like the lower half of green arrow with a bow he says that he doesn't know some people are hunting him, but he doesn't know who they are. So it's hinted, it's not confirmed, because um, as we know, obviously in Green Lantern's case, he had a way to f- to not die to the sunlight. But the vampires cannot come out in the daytime. That is a pretty cardinal rule when it comes to vampires. Yeah, see this um this book's got plenty of dark tones because you know everyone could come for you and everyone could be a vampire and you know everyone's a threat at the moment and. Apparently, the vampires have a lot of power since they took down the Legion of Doom. Yes, they killed the entire Legion of Doom, which is psychics, borderline gods, uh, fighters that are, you know, Black Mana is a highly trained fighter. He fights Atlanteans. Lex Luthor, who is a super genius. Yeah. Um, and I think Grodd was there, who is a like a, a tier A psychic ability. Grodd's still alive, though. He's a vampire, right? Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, yes, he is still alive. But so they took him down because they managed to change it. Yeah, so he's definitely there. Um, that was pretty cool to see the vampire monkey. I enjoyed the the red like filter he put over all the flashback scenes. Yep, yeah, no, very, that was pretty nice. nice touch added to the just your not your generic uh, previously on segment. Yeah. Um, it's but, a good way to look at the back uh, the uh, the past uh, scenes. So. Uh, yeah. We'll see where this goes, but my one complaint... So, this book's going to get a lot of comparisons to DC. DC's being DC's vampire, or zombie book. Um, and in DC, they killed Batman in the first issue of the first book. Because they don't want him, you know, finding a cure, being like, Oh, I'm a super genius, here's the cure, everybody, and the book's over. Yep. This one, he's still alive, and it appears he's going to be kind of a main fight against the vampires he it does not seem like he's infected not yet uh, at least alfred's obviously not infected because he didn't know who the guy was that gave him this random needle full of blood in a letter um but uh yeah they've definitely laid the groundwork for the rest of this i mean it is a limited series so one out of 12 it's 12 issues so there's still quite a bit to go i mean they could they could kill whoever they want in issue two um but yeah Story was good. Pacing was great. I mean, we're just... I guess I'm looking forward to more of that. I cannot wait for issue two. All right, moving on to the next one. Task, well, keeping it with the... uh... The Halloween theme this week. Both were out yesterday, or two days ago. Uh, Task Force Z. Same writer, Matthew Rosenberg, and artist was uh, Eddie Barrows. Yeah, um, they uh, do stand out. Start with this one? Yeah, like I, I like the little group they've put together. Um, I mean, it's it, it's a different pace, different story, um, especially with all these zombies um, being around and Jason Todd spearheading the task force. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was captured on the B story of last issue's Detective Comics. You see him get grabbed by whomever he's working for now. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's I, I like the group. Um, Arkham Knight's dead. Uh, we've got uh, Undead Bane. We've got Man Bat. That's just like on him. The Man Bat is quite cool. If you read the Man Bat miniseries, that is t that's all about him dying and trying to find a cure for himself. That was a five issue miniseries. Um, and then the final one that we saw in this one was Mister Bloom who seems to be the smartest of them remaining, because he does talk with Red Hood. Yeah, and he uh, says Red that he's does. still alive? Yeah, so Mr. Bloom, not too much is known about him. They hint at a lot of things back in the Scott Snyder Capullo run. Um, but they kept him kind of in the dark. He was quite powerful. He could give out these, he called them seeds to people and give them different abilities. Um and uh, he does end up, I guess, basically dying at the end of Super Heavy. That was the arc he was the villain of. Um, and we have not seen him since. No, he, uh, and in here he just doesn't really do much. No, I, I'm going to say I, I'm probably not going to continue this series. I was, uh, I just didn't like it. It was, I'm not afraid of anybody dying because they obviously can all just be, they're already dead anyways. They can just be regrowing with this Lazarus serum yeah um there's also another character that we see on the first cover someone named sundowner uh not much is seen on the internet i looked him up but i don't see much about him so i don't know if he's a new character just for this book or is that crazy quilt or crazy quilt is still alive yeah he just pops up in the beginning yes but this is sundowner this guy ah, here, okay yeah i was just thinking that maybe they'll turn um crazy quilt uh, I don't think they're going to turn anyone, but I think they're just looking for something. Because they, they're trying to get to Mr. Freeze at the end. Yeah. Um, and judging off that, that'll be a very... This is going to be a very Batman-centric book. I mean, everybody in here is a Batman villain. Um, but yeah, we'll see where this one goes. See, something yeah. I really enjoyed was that panel with Mr. Freeze when it's his body. And it's him fighting the man bat. And then it's like his body silhouette. And that's what's become the panels. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, uh, so the, the art was definitely the strong suit of this book. Uh, same as the last one, even though I enjoyed Vampires more than Task Force Z. Um, but yeah. I mean, it could be interesting as Jason Todd tries to, uh, you know, fix his stuff and... Um figure out who these people are it's very very online with deathstroke inc it was the same vibe yeah. i was getting from this one yeah agreed um, all right well let's move it on to the next yeah, one going back to last week for this one catwoman lonely city a three issue maxi series uh cliff chiang i believe is how you pronounce his last name did everything on this book R wrote it art colors uh this covers his the main cover for the other one is his as well um, so yeah, this this one's uh, this one's interesting. Let's yeah, it's um, it's a nice story. It's a Catwoman story. You know, it's almost like a new run. Um, but with something happened about ten years before, and uh, it starts you off nice. I mean, it's uh, it, this feels a lot like The Dark Knight Returns. This is kind of a, a female centric version of that. Uh, someone's in retirement, whether in this case forced retirement. Um, but they come out for a particular reason. Um, obviously, in the Dark Knight Returns case, it was Gotham is now violent again. This Gotham is not violent at all. No, everyone. Harvey Dent is now mayor and has these bat bot people. Um, kind of reminded me of the Peacekeepers um, from the main continuity right now. Uh, but he's put all types of restrictions on people. Uh, you have to have these badges uh, yeah. to, to go anywhere. Um no cash i guess that would definitely stop a legal crime because obviously they're they're not using credit cards as part of illegal dealings yeah, it just seems like they're under heavy surveillance uh most more than it's, anything it's a, yes it is definitely a a police state uh lots of cops um but the good thing this book did was definitively kill batman Once yeah again. we know he is he dead. is dead so is alfred jim gordon and nightwing are all dead yeah. Barbara Gordon wants nothing to do with Selena Kyle. Uh, she, Selena Kyle goes to ask her some questions. She just outright ignores her or tries to ignore her. Um, well, yeah, we're trying gets... to. F she didn't really get any answers about what um, Orpheus. Was. Yeah, so Orpheus is apparently the main, uh, the main piece to this story. Uh, Catwoman wants to know what it is. Yeah, Batman mentioned it Batman as he was dying. Giving it to her as he's dying. It's a, it's like a last words story. 
Yeah, yeah I was thinking like call this one. I don't think his uh bat uh batarang was uh like a key to something. I, w- I was guessing yes, it was a key of some kind. Um, is Orpheus a person? Is it a is it a weapon? Is it a stash? Is it a way for Selena Kyle just to leave Gotham and never come back? Yeah, like we won't know until we won't know until issue two, which is one that looks like it's going to be every other month. So December will be issue two. Very cool. Um, so we'll definitely, definitely be bringing that one back. One final thing to note: the one twenty-five ratio cover is amazing. Yeah, uh, the, the blue eyes and the blue lettering in the Lonely City pop really well on the the black, white, and gray. Yeah, no, I actually enjoyed how like the one twenty-five cover was for this one. I just. Made me think twice about trying to get a 125 for what I think it's a great cover. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do the other two books as 125s. Just so they match. That's the little OCD thing. Um, But then we're into our final book, which is actually a year old. uh, But the third book just came out. uh, And that is Reckless by Ed Brudebaker and art by Sean Phillips. Um, So we both just recently read this. Um, I picked it up just because it sounded good. And it was quite good. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to uh, review something different for a change. I mean, from something that's not main, you know, DC or Marvel. We want to expand our horizons. This is Image Comics, um, and we figured with the third book just coming out a week ago, this would be the the best time to to talk about it. So, um, yeah, it's a great story, great characters. It's set in the 80s. Yep, 80s, uh, height of the drug trade out from, you know, from South America. Uh, the FBI in Florida. The FBI dealing. is all over the place. A uh, lot of, a lot of espionage feel to it. Um, you know, car bombings to silence people. Or well, we thought that was the case. Yeah, that ends up not being the case. But uh, the crime fiction genre definitely has some has some good stuff in it. Yeah, no. As I said, it was a great story, and the characters are—they really get to you. I mean, yeah, all the characters are very likable, very unique. That was the—that's the main thing that that kind of pops out at you. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what else. Great, like violent scenes. On. Yeah, there's some quite violent scenes in this one. The opening when he's just you know hatcheting people, um, and then later on when he kills the the like drug lord. I guess that's what he is, um, and ends up kind of cutting his own arm in order to, to get him. So as you say, I mean, the guy, is, it's reckless, and he does do some pretty reckless things. Uh, the whole premise of the book is quite quite interesting. A phone number that you can call with a problem, and if he wants to help you solve the problem, he will. Yeah, so that's um, kind of cool, you know. You see that it's things as simple as, your car, you know, you want your car back, or somebody stole your car, or something as simple as that. Or in this case, it can get to much larger, you know, murders, robberies, unofficial repos, if you will, I suppose is a, is a word for it. Yes, I'm guessing back in, in the 80s, yeah. you could get away with a little bit more in this, <laughs> especially if, you know, he's ex-FBI. Yeah, so, so. he's definitely trained because, uh, yeah, he's ex-FBI, so he knows all the espionage ways, listening, fighting, uh, weapons, um, just how things work. He's obviously on the other side of the law, so he knows that side of things as well. So, you know, overall, I, I think it was greatly done. The story is amazing. The uh, panels are great. Yes, uh, the, the, pa- the pacing is the the part that brings this book together. Yeah, I mean, it's very well paced. You're not asking too many questions for long. Yeah, it doesn't move too fast. It doesn't move too slow. It's it's definitely... And it stands on its own for a book that had two announced sequels when it first came out. Oh, yeah. I, the book does a great job of just... You could read this one, not read the second or third one, and it'd be fine. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a standalone. It'll be great, but I I am looking forward to more. Yeah, I will be grabbing the second and third one as soon as, uh, as, soon as I can. So we'll be talking about those, I'm sure. And, uh, well, that wraps up the uh, wraps comic up the book. Comics for the week, yeah. Um, let's see what other announcements yeah, we have. We have some news, some some very fresh off the press stuff. Uh, Brendan Fraser is the hot item right now. I remember uh, people were all f- on his case, you know, trying to bring him back. He disappeared for a long time. Yeah, and now he's everywhere. Yeah, he's on Doom Patrol as as Robot Man. Great there. Hilarious. And Hilarious. now we've heard that he's going to be in the new yeah. Batgirl movie. It sounds like he will be Firefly, uh, the Batman villain. Or in this case, it'll be the Batgirl villain. Uh, this is going to be on HBO Max. 
this was one movie that they didn't talk about at all at Fandom, and I thought they would have. Like, this would have been a good announcement for Fandom. It would have been... Well, they already had plenty of announcements. We could have uh, True. had a super extended Fandom special if they kept on <laughs> throwing everything in there. We did try right. to throw everything we, we saw, but... Um, yeah, that would be cool to see him in more stuff. I mean, he grew Definitely up making a, a career comeback. Um, let's see. We got uh, for Spider-Man No Way Home uh, confirmation of Lizard and Sandman yes. coming back. From Amazing Spider-Man 1, The Lizard, and then from Spider-Man 3, uh, Sandman. Sandman. So that's um, awesome. More villains to add on there with Doc Ock. Um, I heard read somewhere they were trying to do like the Sinister Six, but five because also the villains that we have confirmed so far in spider-man i think it's about time to do a sinister six movie i mm. mean or uh something with the sinister six it's it's a it's a a very big chunk of spider-man mythos and lore it feels very weird to just act like they don't exist yeah um so and then got... next up on the marvel side uh bill murray has an unannounced has an unconfirmed role in ant-man 3 um, they haven't said how big that role is. If it's like a zombie land type thing, he will be Bill Murray. Minute. He'll be Bill maybe Murray. He will be Bill Murray. Maybe he's playing himself. But uh, that's something, something interesting to keep an eye on. Uh, finishing off on the Marvel end, just so everyone's aware, Guardians of the Galaxy game is out. I haven't tried it yet, but I might, might have to. I mean, I, I did hear that it's you just play as Quill, and everybody else is kind of like a side character to you. It was reviewed highly. IGN gave it an eight out of ten. Well, which that's pretty good. Yeah, I can't can't beat an eight out of ten. So I'll um, I'll check that out soon enough. Back to the DC side of things, the canceled the trench movie. Uh, per director James Gunn was actually going to be a Black Mana movie, a solo movie. They were just calling it the trench as part of marketing as a kind of a code name. Um, but uh, that movie, unfortunately, doesn't sound like will ever be made. Maybe someday. Uh, DC has to get its movie universe settled first. Um, who is who and what's happening when. Because, um, like, su- The Suicide Squad by James Gunn. You know, where are all the other heroes as this giant starfish just destroys a city? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's uh, Superman is around. There's no way you can't right. see it. So. Right now, every single movie in the DC universe feels very disconnected from one another. As compared to the Marvel movies where you hear them, you know, you see them reference each other. You see each other in each other. Crossover. Right, right. So they, the DC does have the um, foothold on the, uh, when it comes to this TV series, they have a lot of crossover yeah, they're, they're on this stuff. they definitely better on the animated side of things. They're better on the TV side of things. Um, but the movies is where they're definitely going to have to sort that out. Well, they're getting there slowly. I mean, we, we did get the Justice League and we are getting all those awesome movies coming out soon. So Right, um, right. Um, and I think the final bit of news is Dune 2 has been officially confirmed. Uh, the first one was filmed to be a, a two-part movie, um, but some people were kind of concerned that it, it didn't do the best with the pandemic and all this stuff. Um, but that has been confirmed for October of 2023. Oh, nice. Okay, so yeah, I should um, pick that up on HBO Max. That is on HBO Max right now. Yeah, it just came out. Um I think that's all we've got for you guys today. I think that is it, yes. Cool. Uh, Thanks thanks for tuning in. Busy week in comics. we got a lot of new stuff. Human Target 1 is expected next week, so that'll be a a fun one. Tom King and Greg Smallwood. Uh, I've got some pretty awesome covers coming up soon. A lot of Venomized stuff from the uh, Marvel Universe. I think they're just trying to... There's a new Venom 1 coming out. So yeah, they're so. trying to tie into that yeah, between the between Venom two the movie and then the new Venom book by Al Ewing, Rom V. Um, Venom is the hot topic at Marvel, and I'm okay <laughs> with that. It's one of my favorites. Right, so, can't uh, disagree with that. All right, well we'll stop it right there. That's where we're gonna call it for the week, guys. Well, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like our page. And uh, if you have any comments, please let us know. We want to know what you think. Yeah, yeah what did you guys think? Uh, any of this news exciting to you? What did you guys think about the books this week? Or have you played the game, Guardians of the Galaxy? Right, let us know there as well. Should we play it? Should I buy it? Yeah, should we buy it? That's that's always a good question. All right, well, uh, all right. well thanks, guys. And in today's timeline. <laughs>